I love Khalees. She has been through a lot through the years, but there has been a lot of scandal and controversy as well. This one is pretty tough for me because as much as I love her artistry, style, and boldness, some of her behaviors have left her fans and rivals alike a little puzzled on how to react and they question if she's actually not as nice behind the scenes. But in today's video, well, we'll get into it all, her beef with Beyonce, Nas, and how Rihanna and Kelly Rowland ended up catching some strays. But first, we will do a style analysis for her because she still is and was one of the flyest, most eclectic stars in the industry. We will also start from the very beginning, which is her childhood and how Khalees became the Khalees we all know today. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you're already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's start first with her fashion. If if you're talking about the fashion trends of the early 2000s, you just can't skip over Khalees style. She was a real trendsetter back then and nobody could compete with her amazing outfits. She loved to mix and match different patterns and she wasn't afraid to wear unusual outfits. From tight corset tops and short skirts to glitzy dresses for special occasions and wild animal prints, Khalees rocked them all. Khalees also loved colors. She loves bold, bright, and shiny colors. She also stated in a house tour video that nothing about her was minimalist. Her motto is, the more the better, more is more is more is more. You can really tell that this is indeed her model through her fashion and hair and makeup because she is not shy about playing with a diverse amount of colors and different styles. These days, we're seeing a lot of the fashion trends from the early 2000s making a comeback, but let's Let's remember that Khalees was one of the first to make those styles really, really popular in the urban market. Khalees has become a favorite among many people and not just because of her unique mix of punk, rock, rap, and R&B music. For several years now, young fans have been looking up to her as a fashion inspiration. They've been sharing pictures of her best outfits from the early 2000s, admiring her natural sense of style, and discussing how she influenced Pharrell's own iconic fashion style. But Khalees is more than just a source of inspiration. She's a perfect example of how to be yourself and not worry about what other people think. Khalees has always been straightforward and confident. And back in 2006, she told Vibe Vixen magazine, and I quote, I don't care what these white girls are wearing in the magazines. They're not the ones starting trends. I've always been a trendsetter, so I don't need to see what's happening. I know what I like, and I'm going to put it together how I like it, end quote. That's quite a bold statement, but it's not so surprising coming from Khalees because she is bold, okay? She's the same woman who wrote a fiery open letter to Peta when they questioned her love for fur. She has always been fearless and unapologetically herself and that's why we love her. Now, when it comes to her hair and makeup, I loved how experimental she was. I, she was one of the first to really dye her eyebrows the same color as her hair with the tips, you know, the blonde roots with the pink tips or the green tips. I just love the creativity and it seems like no matter what color she dyed her hair, whether it be red, whether it's purple, pink, green, whatever the color, even black, okay? It went well with her. She looked beautiful in it no matter what color she dyed it and her creativity in that department has left her as an icon with the whole eyebrow look and you know, it just complimented her skin tone so well. In makeup, she would play with colorful eyeliner makeups and under eye liner makeup. Now let's go into her childhood. Khalees Rogers, better known simply as Khalees, is a multi-talented American singer, songwriter, and chef who was born on August 21st, 1979. Her life story began in the Harlem neighborhood of Manhattan, specifically the Frederick Douglass houses. Her father, Kenneth, an African-American jazz musician, Pentecostal minister, and former Wesleyan University professor, Professor, and her mother, Evelise, a Chinese Puerto Rican fashion designer, raised her alongside her three sisters. Growing up in such an artistic and diverse household, Khalees was naturally exposed to a world of creativity from an early age. With her parents' encouragement, young Khalees dove into the world of music, singing in church choirs, and playing several instruments, including violin, piano, and saxophone. She attended Manhattan Country School, a private institution, where she nurtured her musical talents. 
At the tender age of 13, she made the bold move of shaving off all her hair, which was just a glimpse of the unique personality that would later shine in her music career. Khalid's teenage years were far from ordinary. At 16, after clashing with her mother, she found herself living away from home. However, she continued her education at the Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Arts and Performing Arts. During this time, she formed the R&B trio Blue, Black Ladies United. She also juggled part-time jobs as a bartender, and clothing store sales associate, yet the conventional 9 to 5 lifestyle wasn't for her. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, she said, and I quote, I didn't want to work a 9 to 5 job, so I was like, what can I do? Well, I guess I should do what I've been doing all my life and just get paid for it, end quote. Khalees was already making waves in the R&B industry. A friend introduced her to the production duo The Neptune, which included Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo, who helped her secure her first record deal right after high school. Her debut album, Kaleidoscope, produced by The Neptunes and released by Virgin Records in 1999, marked the beginning of her professional music journey. Khalees' career didn't stop there. She went on to release five more studio albums from 2001 to 2014, including Wonderland, Tasty, Khalees, was here, flesh tone, and food. Her music often featured on the Billboard Hot 100 and she received numerous accolades for her work. As part of her concert tours, she traveled the globe, an experience that would later inspire her culinary pursuits. While her hit song Milkshake is perhaps her most famous track, Khalees' music transcends genres, blending elements of R&B, rap, funk, and disco. Despite her Grammy nominations for Best Urban Alternative Performance for Milkshake in 2004 and Best Contemporary R&B Album for, for Khalees was here in 2007, a win eluded her. However, she did triumph at the New York Music Awards, winning all three nominations, including Best R&B Video and Best Dance Single for Acapella and Best R&B Album for Flesh Tone. She was also crowned Best Solo Artist at the Glamour Awards in 2004. In total, Khalees has collected nine awards from 33 nominations, a testament to her enduring talent and appeal. Comment below your favorite songs from her. Mine, of course, the number one is Caught Out There. I don't know. I just love the fashion, the anger, the raw emotion in it. It's so fresh, even for for today and I also love acapella the harmonies in it now in terms of her artistry she did an interview with Yahoo Life that gives some insight into her artistry and the controlling nature of the industry she said and I quote my motivation is never other people it feels good to make a mark on music and fashion trends the star says that showing up as herself was always the only option she said and I quote it was really just like I don't know how to be someone else she says it hasn't always been easy Khalees admits that at the start of her career she was somewhat naive about the way in which the music industry would try to change her and her image. She said, and I quote, I had no idea that there'd be board meetings about my weight or my hair or how black or not black I was. It was just sort of foreign, she says. But in some ways, she thinks her innocence to the realities of the industry allowed her to operate as her most authentic self. She said, and I quote, I was young and rife with ideas and bursting with energy and creativity. And like, you couldn't stop me if you tried. Now, as she looks back on her career, she is able to recognize just how far her gumption and self-assuredness propelled her. You don't even have time to really think about it until you're looking back and you're like, oh wow, I guess it was ballsy for me to do that, she says. But at the time, it was really just like, I don't have anything else. I put all my time and energy into this, and so we really need to make this work, end quote. Khalees is not just a talented musician, but also a passionate cook. Her love for food started at a young age, long before her music career took off. I've always been around good food. My mom ran a catering business, and she always made sure our meals look as good as they tasted, Khalees recalls. But Khalees didn't just grow up around food. She embraced it wholeheartedly. She secretly went to culinary school after establishing herself in the music industry, studying at the prestigious Le Cordon Bleu. Culinary school was intense. We were in the kitchen for nine hours every day, learning everything about cooking. But I first learned how to cook from my mom, she says. Khalees' passion for food didn't stop at cooking. She co-wrote a cookbook and even created her own fashion accessory line called Cake. She appeared on Top Chef Masters is a guest judge and now hosts her own show on the cooking channel called Saucy and Sweet. Born and raised in Harlem, New York City, she was exposed to a diverse range of cuisines. My mom is Puerto Rican and Chinese, so her cooking had a lot of those influences. I cook in a similar way, but I like to mix things up. 
When I cook for my son, I make sure the food looks good and tastes great, she says. Khalees and rapper Nas first crossed paths at the MTV Video Music Award party in 2002. They hit it off right away, started dating, and after about a year, they decided to take things to the next level. They got engaged in 2004, and by January 2005, they were married. However, their marriage wasn't meant to last. In April 2009, when Khalees was seven months pregnant, she filed for divorce. She said they had too many differences that they just couldn't resolve. Just a few months later, Later in July 2009, Khalees gave birth to their son. The divorce was finalized in May 2010. Khalees has spoken openly about her relationship with Nas, saying it was both physically and mentally abusive. She says the thought of bringing a child into this situation is what ultimately led her to end the marriage. Khalees also mentioned how the violent incident between Rihanna and Chris Brown influenced her decision to leave Nas. Seeing pictures of Rihanna's injuries hit close to home for Khalees because she had been in a similar situation. But at the time, she kept quiet about it. Nas responded to Khalees' accusations on social media, saying, she was trying to tarnish his reputation during a custody battle. He also accused Khalees of mistreating his daughter. He wrote about seven slides of his side of the story, and I'm going to read some of it, but he said, this is the first and last time I'm addressing this. Today, I got a call from Essence about my ex-wife doing another sad, fictitious story, he begins. This is what your life has come to, sis, exploiting some people's real struggle and pain just to get at me, to get attention, fame. We are a human family. And we should be better examples for our son. Why is there even an issue for me to have time with my son? A son needs his father. He also claims that he endured hostile behavior and verbal abuse during their marriage and says Khalees physically attacked him earlier that year. In part four of his open letter, he describes Khalees as evil. Not a single person in my life loved or could even stand you, he says. Luckily for you, our assistants all signed NDAs or you would have a list of men and women who would happily talk about how verbally abusive and evil you are. Your self saboteur ways has caused you your grief you're dealing with. I heard you said terrible things about me. It makes me feel sad how heartless you can be. You play with strong women's struggles like they mean nothing. He's talking about Rihanna. You're taking advantage of a moment in time where women who are fighting for their lives to get justice and be treated fairly and you just look at it as an opportunity to get ahead. Like abuse is a game. Like tearing down your son's father is a game. You have a son. Why are you still competing with me by telling him bad things about me? He goes on to reveal that he financially supported Khalees through rough times and that she has been unreasonable throughout the custody battle. Let me say that I gave you the tools to be successful after you was dropped from your label. I paid for your cooking school, Cordon Bleu, the expensive yellow stove we had flown in from Europe. I helped pay for the remodeling of your house. Out of all people, you should be completely understanding of my grind. In part six, he denies the abuse allegations and says he is done with the games. I do not beat women. I did not beat on my ex-wife. Stop, he says. You got beat up in court. How much money do you want? Do you want me to relinquish my rights to see my son? Is that what you want? Just tell me. After all the tweets and posts you made through the years disrespecting me and my family, I still have love for you as the mother of my child, but I am done with this. This game ends now and God will be the judge of all of this, end quote. Moreover, Khalees claims that Nas excessive drinking and affairs were factors that hurt their relationship. Nas said a lot, but if her claims about him are true, abusers do know how to flip the script and make you look crazy. Okay, him bringing up paying for cooking classes is insane because that was your wife. But then again, if he feels like she is lying on him on such a serious matter, then nothing is really off limits, right? There are some things that he said that could make you think this is pretty gaslighting. Whenever um, someone starts to um, include other people in their disgust for you, when he said, the assistants and everyone around me hates you and think you're evil and stuff like that. Whenever people start recruiting other people to join and how they feel about you, it's always very manipulative to me. And it's a tactic that narcissists use a lot. I'm not calling Nas a narcissist, but it is a tactic that they use to kind of make you feel like, hey, I'm not the only one who feels this way about you. And to get the public to feel like, hey, I'm not the only one who feels this way about her or him, you know, here's how everybody else feels. So that did kind of pique my interest. And then the specific specifics about the stove and stuff like you keep tabs of things like this someone is just accusing you of beating on them and cheating and drinking you'd focus on these allegations but he did kind of talk in a lot of circles and brought up other stuff that was like okay I don't understand but comment below your thoughts on that and 
it's not like in defense of Khalees, but I am being fair. And sometimes a woman can go through so much in a relationship too that they do lose their mind. They become a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more violent. Same for men. Some men will get out of a toxic relationship and you see they're altered a little bit where they're not as nice as they used to be or as much of a gentleman as they used to be. They kind of become as toxic as the women they were dating, right? So a lot of that happened. And I feel like Nas was kind of using that to his advantage a little bit. But of course, mm, we don't know what happened behind the scenes, but it was just those little parts that stuck out to me. And I'm sure they did go through things that normal couples go through and stuff like that. But she did leave. She was the one to leave the relationship and she just escaped for her son. And she didn't say nothing for a very long time and decided to say something. So, and in April, 2018, Khalees said that until 2012, Nas hadn't paid any child support or been actively involved in their son's life. She said he doesn't participate. He shows up when it's fun. He shows up when and there's a good photo op i don't think it should be 50 50 just because you had sperm involved end quote in march 2007 Khalees was arrested by police in miami beach florida and charged with disorderly conduct according to the arrest report officers were pretending to be you know street workers in a sting operation when Khalees started shouting racial slurs at them she was taken to miami dade county jail and later released on a 1500 hundred dollar bond in september 2008 Khalees was found not guilty of the charges a spokesperson for Khalees said she planned to sue the Miami Beach police for wrongful arrest and violating her civil rights. Police found love again with photographer Mike Mora. They got married in 2014 and in November 2015, they welcomed their first child together, a son. Since January 2020, Police has been living on a remote farm outside Los Angeles, which she manages herself. And in September 2020, she gave birth to her and Mora's second child, a daughter. But in September 2021, Mora shared some heartbreaking news on Instagram. He revealed that he was diagnosed with an aggressive aggressive stomach cancer in September 2020 and was given only 18 months to live. Sadly, Moore passed away on March 14, 2022 at the age of 37. Now, she went on to date Bill Murray. Mm, that was really odd, you know. <laughs> she was 44 and he's 72, but they ended up breaking up. Now, let's get into this whole Beyonce scandal, okay? Just before Beyonce's highly awaited seventh album, Renaissance, was released, R&B singer Khalees felt really upset. For weeks, Beyonce had been, had been exciting her fans with sneak peeks about the dance music album. She started with the single Break My Soul, then revealed a list of songs and finally the people she worked with on the album. This included famous artists like Donna Summer, which I did a video for, Robin S. and Khalees. But Khalees wasn't happy because she wasn't told that Beyonce would be using one of her songs. She even called it theft. The song that caused all the fuss was Khalees' hit, Milkshake, which was used in a, in a new way on Beyonce's song, Energy, a dance track featuring rapper Beam. Khalees shared her feelings on Instagram saying, and I quote, my mind is blown too, because the level of disrespect and utter ignorance of all three parties involved is astounding. I heard about this the same way everyone else did. Nothing is ever as it seems. Some of the people in the business have no soul or integrity and have everyone fooled. When a fan tried to make things better by saying that Beyonce probably looks up to Khalees, Khalees didn't agree. She said, and I quote, admire is not the word. Khalees later explained why she was so angry. She said she knows Beyonce and they have mutual friends. She also said it was more than just about the song. Khalees felt that Beyonce should have contacted her before using her song. It's common decency, she said. She added Milkshake Alone is one of the most licensed records of our generation. I am a creator. I am an innovator. I have done more than left my mark on an era of music and style that will go down in history. But Khalees' main problem wasn't with Beyonce, but with Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo. She had accused them of tricking her into a bad deal that gave them all the rights to her music and left her with nothing. This means that even though Khalees is the original singer of Milkshake, she doesn't hold any rights to the song. So her permission wasn't needed for another artist to use the song. Khalees said in her Instagram video, and I quote, I also know the lies that were told. I also know the things that were stolen. Publishing was stolen. People were swindled out of rights. It happens all the time, especially back then. So it's not about me. Being mad about Beyonce, she added, Pharrell knows better. This is a direct hit at me, and he does this stuff all the time. The reason I'm annoyed is because I know it was on purpose. Khalees believes that using Milkshake without her permission was done on purpose. She said, this is not like some, oh, they were in the studio. No, no. This was an on purpose direct hit, which is very passive aggressive. It is very petty. It is very stupid. End quote. Khalees went on to say, the reality is that my real beef is not only with Beyonce, because at the end of the day, she sampled a record. She's copied me before. Mm, shade. So I have many other artists. It's fine. I don't care about that. 
but sis, why did you bring it up if you didn't care about it? <laughs> but there are bullies and secrets and gangsters in this industry that smile and get away with it until someone says enough is enough, Khalees concluded. So I'm saying it today. I'm coming for what's mine and I want reparations, end quote. But she did go even further with her shade towards Beyonce, which left fans calling her obsessed and her beef a little more than just about the music. A Beyonce fan commented under her post saying, thanks for the promotion. And Khalees responded, I mean, if this is promotion, then that speaks to the quality of the demographic and she needs no promo from me she has satan lol that was a joke lol a good one but a joke nonetheless lol end quote yikes fans even told her that kelly unfollowed her and kelly caught astray when khalees responded that she wouldn't have even noticed mm. khalees also threw a subtle diss at singer rihanna for copying her style i feel like rihanna wrote a wave created by khalees a fan wrote in khalees comments to which the singer responded let's not open that pandora's box today lol one step at a time friend end quote one individual put put khalees on blast after she called out beyonce a fan wrote nas was right about you khalees didn't overlook the snarkiness and fired back yeah he was madly in love and has never been the same end quote lipstick alley and fans also speculated that khalees bossy was a diss at beyonce for ring the alarm when she states i'm bossy i'm the first girl to scream on a track i switched up the beat of the drum end quote and ring the alarm beyonce screams and it's an angry anthem similar concept to cut out there you know that i hate you so much right now and beyonce was very aggressive on the track khalees has felt slighted by beyonce for a long time but in art and music inspirations to me come from everywhere right khalees has never confirmed these claims but fans continue to speculate and personally i don't think beyonce necessarily copied copied her in that sense because there's you know like you have james brown so many other people that was just screaming on the track singing on the track like i've covered a lot of artists from you know even different eras the 60s the 70s that used to just scream on the track the woman and sing with such an aggressive passionate tone also so i don't know if that's true but then this is fans speculating not khalees saying that but if khalees went as far as to say that then it would make it look like dang why why i don't know comment below your thoughts but some fans had some response and one said she doesn't have a problem with not owing her masters she has a problem with bay and it's clear as day because if this was me i would be airing the f out of pharrell or whoever owns them but i see that's not the case with her end quote another fan said oh lord khalees boo you out out here embarrassing me please give our good sis a break she is grieving and dealing with bitterness end quote another fan said khalees is just embarrassing herself unless she gives a public concrete proof that beyonce did her dirty behind the scenes she just look obsessed and jealous beyonce got permission to sample some drums and she's going off like her whole song was stolen end quote another fan said khalees needs to get off social media she's coming across as bitter and jealous if it's not all about b why is she still responding to all these comments about her why is she engaging with trolls on the internet come on now let's stop being obtuse about it because of who she has a problem with end quote this is hard for me another fan said which is what i agree with that's my sentiments <laughs> the same this is hard for me because i love khalees music and obviously a b fan i'm trying to understand because she had a loss and maybe she needs to be better advised venting on social media is not a good look it makes her look petty i totally agree why not have her people reach out to pharrell's people and beyonce's people and handle this privately like adults end quote and i must say i understand sometimes you just get fed up we saw it happen to a marie and so many other people like we did breakdowns for that you know how the industry is very very shady so khalees looks like this type to not hold her tongue and just speak but I think the Satan jokes is what made it like, okay, sis, that's your peer. That's your peer. If I got on here and I started throwing shots at another YouTuber by saying something like that, that would create a whole beef. Those are my peers, right? Those are like your coworkers. And it just doesn't, yeah, that took it to the next level. She just left it at the disappointment because at first a lot of people were siding with her. Like, yes, Khalees, speak up, blah, blah, blah. But the minute she went into the whole, she got Satan and then the straight for Kelly. And then it just came off very, okay, there's a deeper problem. And for years, people have been saying that Khalees does not like Beyonce. There's like blind items and, you know, reports from sources that have been telling blogs and um, magazines and stuff like that for the longest little stuff behind the scenes of just how Khalees never really liked Beyonce. In terms of Pharrell doing this petty, maybe she's saying, no, this was personal because maybe behind the scenes Pharrell knew that Khalees doesn't like Beyonce and him working with Beyonce with that song specifically would get under Khalees' 
um, skin because he knew that Khalees is not the biggest Beyonce fan. And that's why she was like, oh, heck no. Like, you know what you're doing. This is on purpose. When she said that, I was like, hmm, okay, okay. <laughs> but comment below your thoughts. What do you guys think about this? I still love Khalees. And I think you guys should check out like this newer generation that might not be up to, like, you know, Gen Zers. That's not up to Khalees. Some of her old songs are still fresh. It looks like it was made today. My favorite is Cut Out There. I just love the aggressiveness of it all the time. Like, I didn't even have no heartbreaks. <laughs> and I was singing that song with my whole chest, okay? And I had no heartbreaks. I understand what was going on, no nothing about love. And Tilda Stick is just my jam. And I love acapella also. She's just very, very creative. And I think she feels like she doesn't get her respect or flowers enough. And that can be very irritating when you put a lot of work into your craft. Leave some flower emojis in the comments for Khalees. Give her her flowers and comment below your favorite song. Also comment below, who else would you guys like me to do a breakdown for? If you like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in until next time. Thank you.